We've been learning about how to factor by dividing out a greatest common factor, but also factor a three-termed expression in this particular form. AX squared plus BX plus C. So in this video, we're going to try to mix things up a little bit and have you work a little bit faster to get the factored form. First example, we have an X squared in there. So we do have this part of the expression showing. We have the constant, but we're missing the middle term. We consider this to be a two-termed expression, but it's actually a special case of a three-termed expression called a trinomial. Always check for a greatest common factor. There isn't one. There's a one in front here. So the A equals one. A is one here. B is zero. And C is negative nine. This type of question is called a difference of squares. And we can do these ones very quickly by setting up some brackets, putting our X times X to make the X squared, which is a perfect square. And then thinking about the perfect square nine, taking that square root, putting in our three, and then figuring out ways to make that middle term disappear. And the way is if we put a plus and a minus, or of course we can write it like this, x minus three times x plus three. Either one is correct. Next one, we have the x squared part showing, but these two are out of order. So we want to rearrange our question first so that we have descending powers. We try to think of two numbers that multiply to give a 9 and add up to give a 6. Factors of 9, 1 and 9, 3 and 3, those two add up to give the 6. And so we would write x plus 3 and x plus 3. Or we could write x plus 3 squared. We have two factors and they are the same. This one we had two factors but they were different. Again we have x plus 3 and x minus 3 here and this one we have x plus 3 squared. Notice, square root of 9 is 3, and if you double it, you'll get that middle term. So that's kind of how you can see. Next one, ax squared plus bx plus c is the form. Here we have the x squared, we have the middle term, and we have the constant. We can quickly do this perfect square trinomial question by thinking about the square root of 9 is 3, and we need a negative 3 to make that negative 6. So we were looking for two numbers that multiply to give a 9 and add up to give a negative 6. Those numbers would be negative 3 comma negative 3. They add up to give the negative 6 and they multiply to give the 9. So that's the final result. We have three different expressions to start with and three different factors. Last one. We have a perfect square, we have a perfect square, but 2 and 2 multiplied give us 4, but we could never get a negative 6. So if you think about the old trinomial rules, we're, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give 4 and add up to give a negative 6. Nothing is possible. We only have 1 and 4, 2 and 2, and they never make negative 6. When you have this situation, just because we have a little change, we say cannot be factored. Now let's make sure we understand how that's all connected to area model. The first one, we would have an x squared and a minus 9, and we're looking to fill in the pieces. We don't have middle terms, so the only way to get those to be 0 is to have a 3x and a minus 3x. We can read off the dimensions would be x plus 3 and x minus 3. There are the factors right there. x plus 3 and x minus 3. Next one, 
We know we are wanting an x squared and we know we want a 9. And the two middle terms have to add up to 6x. And the only way to get that would be a 3x and a 3x. So we're left with x times x is x squared. This one would have to be a 3 and this one would have to be a 3. So that means we have an x plus 3 and an x plus 3. That means x plus 3, x plus 3, or x plus 3 all squared. Next one, we want an x squared, we want a plus 9, and somehow we need to make the negative 6x. The only way is a negative 3, negative 3x. That makes the negative 6x. And we can read off the dimensions then x minus 3 times x minus 3, which is x minus 3 squared. And the last one, we know we want an x squared. We're doing this one. We know we want an x squared, and we know we want a 4, and somehow we need a negative 6x. Is that ever possible? Well, no, not possible. So we say can't factor. I always put thinking bubbles because to get to a point where we're going quickly, you need to be thinking for sure, solving the puzzle. So do you need the area model here or can you do these questions very quickly? I hope you're at the point where you can do them quickly. We have a difference of squares, so you will set up the bracket to be either this or this. It's up to you. Usually we do this one x in front and 4 and 4, or x, 4, x, 4, like that. Okay, next one, hopefully you see right off the bat a perfect square, a perfect square, so you can write it as square root of 16 is 4, and then hopefully doubling 4 makes that 8, and it does. Third one, we have a perfect square and a perfect square. Hopefully you see that x minus 4 is what we need because square root of 16 is 4, and then you're doubling that negative 4, which is negative 8. So that's it. And then the last one, we have a perfect square and we have a perfect square, but the problem is this negative here. So I think we better set up the area model to show you that this actually has to be a positive for a perfect square trinomial. We have an x squared, we have a negative 16. Is there any way to make a negative 8x? Meaning two numbers that multiply to negative 16 and add up to negative 8. Those can never combine to make a negative 8, so therefore can't factor. Last set is combining, taking out a greatest common factor with our ax squared plus bx plus c. So you might not be able to factor the, the trinomial that's left in the brackets, but we'll check. First one, take out a greatest common factor of 3, and you're left with x squared minus 9. And then that one is a difference of squares. So we set up x plus 3 and x minus 3, and that would be it. Next one, take out a 3 and you're left with x squared plus 6x plus 6, and is this trinomial factorable? Can you find two numbers that multiply to 6 and add up to 6? Well, no. That can never happen, so we just stop there. Now, just by changing a few things, make this a negative and this a 27, results in a different answer. So take out a common 3, x squared minus 6x plus 9, and then check in here. That's a perfect square. Let's see if we have a perfect square trinomial. And we do. It's an x minus 
3 squared. Square root of that is 3, and then double it makes the negative 6. So that's it. We have 1, 2, 3 factors. And the last one, let's see. Common factor of 3, and we've got x squared minus 6x plus 4. And are we able to factor this inside here? Let's see. Find two numbers that multiply to a 4 and add up to a negative 6. Mm, no. So we just stop right there. All right, you try these ones, and then we'll sign off. Difference of squares, greatest common factor first, and then we have an x minus 5 squared. You might have done this one as an 8 plus y times an 8 minus y, and that's fine. You can stop there. Or if you rearrange first and take out a greatest common factor of negative 1, you could write this question with three factors. Technically, that's probably the best way, but because if you look at this one, you can still factor a negative out and you can rearrange this. You could write it as y plus 8 and then divide out a negative 1, which you need brackets, times negative 8 plus y and then rearrange things. So put this negative 1 in front and then a y plus 8 and then rearrange this one to be a y minus 8. Either way, you've got the same answer. And the last one, ooh, we need to rearrange. Put this one in front. Put the 8x squared first, negative 24x plus 40. Divide out a common factor, 8. You're left with x squared minus 3x plus 5. And then realize that you cannot find two numbers to multiply to 5 and add to make the coefficient of the middle term. Not possible. So this one only has two factors. You're done. Great work.